Hello everyone, I'm Zanya, Zanya Foco, and welcome to Lower Your Cholesterol with these three foods. Can three foods really lower your cholesterol? Yep, they sure can. And these three foods are super easy to make. They're everyday foods you can find in a grocery store. They're super affordable. And I'm gonna show you how to make them so delicious. You'll want to include them every day and you'll get amazing results. If your goal is to surprise your doctor and go in and your cholesterol's been high and he says, whoa, or she says, whoa, your cholesterol numbers are way better and your HDL is good and your triglycerides, this is, in fact, maybe you're not even the same person. <laughs> That's exactly what can happen with these three foods. So thanks for joining me. A little bit about me. Um, some of you are meeting me for the first time, and I have been a registered dietitian for, mm, oh my gosh, over 30 years. Maybe you've seen me on my public television show called Zanya's Health Bites, or maybe you've been cooking from my Licky Split Meals cookbook or my Eat Real cookbook, or maybe you've attended a course with me through your work site or on your own. Or maybe this is our first time meeting. Either way, I'm so excited you're here. So what can you expect from me in this one hour of time together? Let me just say that we are going, you are going to learn how some foods work as well as medicine. Yep, that's right. How some foods work as well as medicine to lower cholesterol and why, how that happens. We're also going to talk about what a lot of people are doing wrong. They think they're doing everything right and they can't understand why their cholesterol is not going down, and they just think that it's just hereditary, but there is a lot that they can be doing dietarily. So we're gonna talk about that so you can make sure you're not doing it wrong. And then we're gonna talk about those three foods. I'm gonna share them with you, three of them, right up top. And then you'll also learn about the four-part uh, cholesterol lowering course I have coming called Conquer Cholesterol and Inflammation Deliciously. I want to share with you that I began my career over 30 years ago. My first 10 years was spent at St. Joseph Mercy Hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan, at the Michigan Heart and Vascular Institute. And there my job was all about counseling people to get their cholesterol down, their triglycerides down, their HDL, the good cholesterol, up in their diet, changing their dietary patterns. And it's interesting that people who had had a heart attack were really motivated. People who had had triple bypass surgery were really motivated, especially when their doctor told them that the average triple bypass only lasts seven years and they'd be back for another. And they said, oh no, I'm never coming back for another. They said, well then, you've got to change your lifestyle if you want this to last. I will tell you, when people have seen their life flash before their eyes, and heart disease is our number one leading killer for both men and women, you want your cholesterol to be a healthy level. You want most of it to be the good cholesterol. You want to get the food right. And the food that comes in, you know, you want to get it right. So one of the things I would share with them, and, and they would say, I'm doing everything right. I've already cut the eggs. I'm already cut back on cheese. I've already, you know, I only have bacon once a week. I'm already doing everything I can. And I go, well, what have you been adding to your diet? And they're like, adding? I go, well, what about beans? Have you been adding beans to your diet? They're like, beans? Beans? Do you mean green beans? No, not green beans. I mean pinto beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans. Are you adding those to your diet? And they're like, what does beans have to do with cholesterol? I go, uh, like everything. <laughs> they're like, everything? Everything. They're like little cholesterol sponges, and they go through your body, and, and, and they sponge up cholesterol, and then you poop it out. And it's like, bye-bye cholesterol. And they're like, beans? Nobody told me that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have just unveiled what food number one is, and that's beans. Pinto beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans. Let's go to our slides, and let me just show you how beautiful they are. I mean, there's so many for variety. Yes, kidney beans in your chili. And yes, once you have beans in and can bring the meat down, that's dynamite. Yes, lentils. Do you know how to make amazing lentil soups? Oh, stick with me and I'll help you know how to make some amazing lentil soups. What about black eyed peas? They're the highest in the spongy soluble fiber that sponges cholesterol out of our body. 
So I'll tell you, beans are an amazing food, and yes, they are food number one. And some of you are saying, Zanya, I watched your lower blood pressure with these three foods, and beans was your A number one food for that too. <laughs> well, beans deserve to be number one on the lower your blood pressure list and on the lower your cholesterol list, and so they are. Did you know that, why did I pick beans? This is why. Did you know that consuming beans four times a week reduces your risk of heart disease by 21%. Did you know that? Did you also know? Now that's, that's consuming beans four times a week. And most people go, well, I have beans four times a year. I have, let's see, I have chili um, with a bunch of sausage and hamburger and stuff like that. And my chili with some kidney beans <laughs> twice in the winter. And then in the summer, I have baked beans with a cup of brown sugar in there and then four strips of raw bacon across the top <laughs> and all the grease cooks down into it. Ah, okay, no. What if we have it four times a week, not four times a year, and we learn how to flavor it properly without ham hocks and stuff? But also, what if we were able to have beans for, how about every day? Check this out. Consuming beans daily reduces your risk of heart disease by 38%. And there's a study that goes with that. So, wow. Pretty amazing stuff. How do beans do it? Well, what's their magic powers? Their magic powers go like this. They're extremely high in soluble fiber. Spongy, soluble, you cook oatmeal, it gets all spongy, gummy, and gooey. You think it's got fiber in it? Yeah, it's spongy, gummy. I always think about kidney beans, soft and mushy. Do they have fiber in them? Yeah, it's spongy, gummy, and that sponges cholesterol out of our body. There's also insoluble fiber, which is valuable too, and it's really good for insoluble, think intestinal, is very good for our intestines and helping fight colon cancer. We want to do both. So when you look at a label, it has total fiber. You want a lot of total fiber, but you really want soluble fiber for lowering your cholesterol uh, and also keeping blood sugar levels uh, good in our body as well. So it's very highly valuable, both of them. So there you go, high in this kind of fiber. And then high in B vitamins, including folicin, which drives down homocysteine. Now, when you go to your doctor and he measures your cholesterol, HDL, triglycerides, LDL, also ask for homocysteine levels. It's new. Well, it, no, it's not new. I've known about it for over 30 years, and it's linked to heart disease and Alzheimer's disease as much as cholesterol levels. In fact, a lot of um, health professionals feel like homocysteine is as valuable, if not more so, than cholesterol. Well, I will tell you that you want a lower homocysteine level and it is very important. So guess what? B vitamins, folicin, drive that down. So very good. They're also loaded with potassium, um, higher than a banana. Um, a lot of people think a banana is the only thing. Oh no, a banana only gets you a tenth of the way. You need so much more than a banana. Um, and beans are incredibly high in potassium, so that helps our blood pressure. And that's really good for heart health but contain phytochemicals that reduce inflammation and the oxidative stress. So we really, all the different things that are going on with beans. In fact, when we study the longest lived people of the world, they're called the blue zones. Okay, so Sardinia, Italy, um, Costa Rica, you look at where these people live to be over 100 years of age. And it's like, why do so many people live to be over 100 years of age? They live off the land, they eat real food, not processed food, not fast foods, but you know what else? They all have legumes, pinto beans, kidney beans, black beans. They are key and instrumental in their diet and it has more of a predominance than meat. They may have meat in their diet, but it is definitely inversely related where we in America Meat is our big thing, and beans are a maybe food. And if we can start to think differently about beans and trade that out, I will tell you, you'll see a difference in your blood cholesterol level. And you'll also see a reduction in your risk for cancer too, and Alzheimer's disease, and you name it, diabetes. Beans are amazing. So I want to encourage you uh, to keep saying yes to them. Now, some of you are a little, well, they're gassy and gas forming. I'll give you some tips for that in just a minute. One more thing, they're high in protein. It often replaces or decreases red meats. And red meats are high in saturated fat and have zero fiber, 
right? And beans are high in protein and they have no saturated fat and they have a ton of fiber. So you can see that Swip Swap is an amazing Swip Swap. All right. So I want to share with you, I got to get you going. I told you about the beans, but that does nothing if I don't help you get going with the beans. And I'm going to share with you this easy peasy <laughs> recipe, my healthified three bean salad that kind of compares, you know, three bean salad that you buy in a store and it's got green beans and, and some, and, and some kidney beans. And it has like a cup of sugar in it and a cup of oil. And it's like, how can we perfect that recipe? How can we ditch the green beans and trade it up, have three bean salad, like really good three bean salad. And how can the flavor be amazing, but bring the sugar way down because sugar raises inflammation in the body and we don't want that. We want to bring sugar down. So how can we perfect this recipe? So let me show you, and you get the link to all these recipes. Black beans, I like to buy them, uh, reduce sodium if you can, but if not, no worries. We're gonna rinse off about 25% of the sodium that um, they use to can these with. Um, I like to buy organic beans when I can, uh, but that's, totally up to you. Um, beans are great and they're inexpensive. Ah, they're just great. So there we go. We got our three beans and I've already chopped up half a red onion and a whole bunch of these nice cherry tomatoes and then fresh basil. I had to buy it. Oh my goodness. I always grow it all summer long just outside my front door, but it didn't kill me to buy it. <laughs> it was, it was okay. And that's a chopped red pepper. So this uh, salad has ample amount of vegetables in it as well as the beans. That's a great uh, combination. Now let's make this great sauce. And the great sauce is a really good balsamic vinegar. I love this 18 year balsamic and then a really good olive oil. And so it's a quarter cup of each of those two. And olive oil, no worries, it's heart healthy. And it actually is gonna help you absorb the lycopenes that are in the tomatoes and all the other. I'm using Dijon mustard, and that Dijon mustard is mm, 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 an amazing ingredient. I use a lot of it in my dressings, and then a teaspoon of honey. And I'll tell you, together, this is gonna make it addictive. And this is what you want to be addictive. <laughs> this kind of a, a bean salad, and a teaspoon goes a long way for all the servings it makes. Now there's a quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper. The sodium will not be too high. It'll be just the right, um, a little bit of, of salt that we all want a little bit of, but it won't be too high for blood pressure or anything like that. That's the dressing. It's not a lot. It's just the right amount. And I want you to just, oh, just, this dressing is going in and you let it set. It's, it's really delicious right away, but if you let it marinate, and this will stay in the refrigerator for three days, and you eat on it for three days. Add it as a side to a sandwich or add it on top of your salad. Let it be the main, um, have a bed of greens and put it on top. Um, you'll, you'll reach in and go, oh my goodness, I'll add this to my lunch today. I'll add this to supplement my dinner. Um, having a little bit of beans. I will tell you a couple things about beans. One, some people say that Zan, they're gassy. I'm not eating them. Forget it. Uh, the whole musical thingness of it, I'm not doing it. Well, a couple of things. If you add a small amount of beans, just a half a cup, gradually to your diet, your body does adapt to the digestion of them. It does. It's when you go a whole month without ever having a legume and then you bing, make a big pot of chili and then it's, it's hard for your body to adjust. The other is a supplement. Um, it's available in your pharmacy and it's called Beano. It works on cruciferous vegetables too, but Beano. And it's just a dietary enzyme that some of us don't make very much of. And if that's what it takes to help you digest that bean so it's not flatulence and music performing for you, then do it. Because beans are gonna extend your life. You're gonna enjoy, enjoy, extend your health. And they help replace meat in our diet and that's dynamite a really dynamite thing. So I wanna encourage you, Beano is a product you can try or just add beans gradually to your diet. So I want you to know that you think, but don't stop there. Um, that's just beans. There's other ways to enjoy beans. One of the biggest ways I enjoy beans is just adding beans to every salad I make. You know, my easy everyday salad, right? Don't stop there. How can we incorporate beans more often? Easy everyday salad right there, whether it's garbanzo beans or black beans or, oh, cannelli beans. I really like the white cannelli beans a lot. 
at, every sale that I have, I add that these are my new crouton, right? These are my new croutons. So encourage you for that. Also, what about soups? Oh my goodness, I'm in love with this Cuban black bean soup. And now these recipes, I am giving you the recipe I'm demonstrating for you. All of you get that. I'm giving you three recipes today. Yay, enjoy them, make them. These others that I'm showing you are all at our website that those of you that are in my courses, you have access to the full uh, recipes of 1000 and uh, at eatrealamerica.com. Or you can purchase, uh, it's only $39 a year or $5 a month if you want to be a member at eatrealamerica.com. And it's an amazing resource to support you and to keep you healthy. But I include it for free in any course that you take with me. But Cuban black bean soup, that's a great one. Or this slow cooker chicken enchilada soup bar uh, is super fun. It's got black beans in there with the corn. And those two together just make a complete uh, protein and great fiber to help sponge cholesterol. It's really great. Um, or these stovetop black be baked beans. They do not have all the brown sugar that traditional baked beans have. It does not have any meat in it at all. And the flavor is mwah, amazing. Uh, we use a sweet potato to help sweeten it. How amazing is that? Real food is amazing. So that's beans. But what's up next? So that was my first. I promised you three. Are you ready for number two? Are you ready? Here we go. Food number two. Drum roll, please. What is it? <laughs> Number two, the second food is, it's fish. And vegetables too. <laughs> Those are always good, but it's fish. True or false? Why did I pick fish? And we'll talk about salmon specifically, but why did I pick this? Consuming a fish five times a week, and some of you are like five times a week, reduces your risk of death from heart disease by 30%. What do you think? Is it true? Is it true? I see lots of trues. Uh-huh. The real answer is 40%. <laughs> oh, I just had to be a little sneaky on you. Wow, 40%. Wow. Consuming fish five times a week. And some of you are like, Zanya, that's ridiculous. There is no way you can eat fish five times a week. Now, wait a minute. There are 14 lunches and dinners in a week, right? You got seven lunches, seven dinners, that's 14 together. Could you make five of those be fish? Unless you're vegetarian, could you make five of those include fish? Like when you cook fish at night, you make extra, and then you have you know, a little extra salmon cooked on, on your salad for lunch. You could get two fur out of cooking it, so you don't only have to cook it two times or three times and have leftover. And between canned salmon and canned tuna, you can use those in your lunches. So it gets pretty easy. Now, one of the skill sets to make fish happen five times a week is learning how to really cook that salmon so it's beautiful like you just saw and learning how to buy salmon. But today, I wanna to show you a cheater and I wanna teach you how amazing it is to use things like canned salmon. I know, canned salmon. This is canned red sockeye. I have gone through so many cans of this in my lifetime, making salmon loaf or salmon patties or salmon burgers. Or some people are weirded out by the, by the bones and the skin that's in this. So guess what? They make skinless, boneless. And when you open up these, it's just like tuna. You have no idea. It smells like tuna. It tastes like tuna. It's like tuna. And you don't have any of that. So I would encourage this if you're weirded out by this. The only benefit to this is this is red and this is pink. And red is a little bit better than pink. Yes, that's true. You're going to have a few more ant omega-3s here. And this is wild and that's beneficial. But the other thing is you can buy salmon in envelopes too. It's rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which douse the flames of inflammation. I know. Just... Think of a flames of inflammation. Remember, some inflammation is beneficial. Like when you get a cut and it gets a little red around it, that's your body going to heal that. And that's acute inflammation, no problem. But then the constant inflammation in our body. And that's, these omega-3s are amazing for that. Also, salmon is particularly rich in DHA and EPA, which most health organizations recommend 1,000 milligrams per day. And guess what? You will not get that if you don't eat salmon. 
And in the course, I'm going to be diving into fish oil supplements, how to pick them, how to not be duped by getting the wrong kind, and how to do that, and when you need to know when you need to take it or not. So I take a fish oil supplement. Um, I'll be sharing uh, the details of how to shop for that in the course. But salmon, excellent source of B vitamins, B12, niacin particularly, um, but also the higher consumption of fish is linked to lower levels of triglycerides, among other risk factors for heart disease. Salmon is also, it helps us lower cholesterol and preserve HDL. In fact, some studies show it may actually help raise HDL. So olive oil, same thing. Using olive oil in our diet can possibly at least preserve HDL and maybe even help raise our HDL. Only a few foods can really help raise HDL. It's mostly aerobic exercise that raises HDL, the good cholesterol but a few foods can give us that ink. The most important thing is that we want to lower our cholesterol without lowering HDL. That's what we really want to do. So this is the recipe that I got ahead of myself on, baked salmon patties with spicy tartar sauce. And some people just aren't ready to buy the fish and cook the fish, but they're, okay, let's give me the can, let me try the can or the envelopes, let me make this amazingly delicious salmon patties that I'm going to serve as burgers. You can make them, turn them into burgers if you'd like. And I'm going to use these new envelopes that I've found. I love these. This is wild caught pink salmon. I wish it was red salmon. I haven't found it in red. There's the canned, reminding you, you can do canned also. Those are two good choices. That's the wild. That one's not wild, but that's okay. Um, looking at some of this, and this is red. Like I said, this, I still love to use this, but you're going to find bones in here, just saying. But I, I'm really in love with this envelope of salmon. And I almost wanted to say, guess what, guys? Our number one food is these envelopes of salmon because it's like tuna. And most people aren't afraid of tuna, <laughs> okay? So they come out fairly easily. Um, they're pretty much drained. There's maybe a teaspoon of liquid in each one. You could drain that out a little bit. And then you just flake it up with your fork. And we're gonna turn these into yummy, scrummy burgers or patties. And yes, two eggs help hold it together. And you could use a flax egg instead if you wanted to, but I want you to know eggs in moderation are A-okay for your cholesterol. Yes, they are. I'm excited about that. Now I'm using almond flour. Ooh, almond flour. You could use a whole wheat flour if you wanted to. Um, it works with that too, but almond flour adds more fiber. It adds more great nutrition than whole wheat flour does. And so I'm excited about that. And it works to uh, add a lot of nutrition and do the same thing as cracker crumbs does. So it's like a healthier cracker crumb in this. And then um, Dijon mustard. Yay. Love me some my Dijon mustard. I'm using it again. <laughs> so got to use some Dijon mustard. Now this is three cloves of garlic. Why put in one clove? You want three cloves of garlic, lots of garlic, because it's heart healthy too. And then we've got a half a teaspoon of dried dill. You can use fresh if you've got that. And um, a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And that, my friends, is the seasoning that goes into this, that Dijon mustard. Um, that's just gonna bring this together. And I, I divide it like this so that I know I can make six patties pretty easily. And at first you think, oh, these aren't holding together very good, but they will. They're gonna hold together so fabulously perfectly. Um, you just uh, just get them into these little patties and put that down there. And, and this is gonna turn into six patties pretty easily. Let me just show you. Um, you just start patting those babies up. And before you know it, you got six of them. And we're not gonna fry these in a pan because then they fall apart and you gotta flip them. And we're just gonna bake them. And we're not gonna flip them. We're just gonna put them in there and we're gonna bake them. And by golly, they're gonna just come out terrific little patties that are gonna replace hamburgers. Wait till you watch that. Now, every salmon burger deserves a special sauce. And I love to use plain Greek yogurt. We only buy plain Greek yogurt, no vanilla. We turn it into vanilla if you want to. And, but I use this as a great sauce. And you could not add the mayonnaise if you want to, but I do add just a tablespoon and a half of a light mayonnaise just because it just makes it perfect. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, and I'm using capers, a tablespoon of capers, but you could chop up some dill, uh, hamburger dill pickles uh, instead if you'd like. Either one works great for this, this. The capers are kind of fun. I have to admit, they're kind of fun. But you don't have to buy them special if you don't want to. And now sh sriracha. 
I am addicted to sriracha. This is the flavored dynamo that's gonna send these over the top. And look at that, it looks like that's a lot, but I'll tell you it's the perfect amount of ting uh, that it's gonna add to these. Look at how those are just perfect. They hold together wonderfully to, to bite into a burger. If you're, if you're the kind of person that loves a nice burger or you wanna do it as a patty, either way. Let me show you. Now, my husband and son, they like a burger and it fills them up. They got the appetite for it. They've got the calorie burn for it. And so yay for them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna add a little arugula. You could use spinach leaves or any kind of lettuce on there, but arugula has a nice bite that is very complimentary to this. And I'm serving this. Oh, am I serving this with fries? Chips? No. <laughs> We're gonna serve this with some that wonderful bean salad on the side. And Look at that, I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna skip the bun. Even though it's a whole wheat bun, it's more calories than my 59 year old body needs. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my lunch. And let me just show you that sauce. And you bite in the inside of this. It's moist on the inside, but it holds together. It's, oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you. It's just delicious, it's just fantastic. So my question to you is, I am challenging you, I'm giving you the recipe to make those salmon burgers or patties, however you wanna do it, and make that sauce. Wasn't hard to make. Will you do it? Oh my goodness, I'm challenging you with two things. Will you make that healthified three bean salad? And will you serve them together? and make that dinner, will you do it? Oh, I would just love it if you would. And I think even if some of you are like, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure, uh, if my family will like it, try it anyway, because that's where the magic happens. In fact, a lot of you um, who know me, you know that I always talk about your comfort zone. And I know that you've arrived here today at your comfort zone of about right here, okay? You like certain burgers, you like certain sandwiches, you like certain things away, certain sauces, certain beverages, certain textures of foods, and you only like beans so much. And here's the thing. I am here to challenge you over here to where the magic happens. And first time you try it, second time you try it, third time you try it, pretty soon this becomes your new comfort zone because this is where the magic happens. This is where your doctor says, whoa, what have you been doing? Your numbers are great. So that, my friends, is what we're talking about. So I served these burgers once. My son was 12 years old. He had his friend Michael over to hang out and I, they were here through lunch and I was like, hey, you guys want lunch? Yeah, and I go, okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna make some burgers. Okay, some burgers. And uh, it's gonna be some, uh, I think I called them guppy burgers. <laughs> and just, I didn't call them salmon burgers, but I mixed these up, cooked them up, served them to the kids, big old buns. They ate them down, you know, and I told their mom, hey, no problem. Michael just had lunch with us. Oh, okay. I go, I served him salmon burgers. He goes, salmon burgers? She goes, my son ate that? I go, yep, gobbled the whole thing down. And they're like, salmon burgers? I've never gotten him to eat anything but a fish stick before. Are you kidding me? And I go, yeah. She goes, I gotta have that recipe. I said, okay, here's the recipe. So I wanted to make sure you saw that. So trying it once, trying it twice, trying it three times. Let's go back to our slide. And I want you to see if you make the swap once a week for a year, just saying. And I wanna show you how to add cool variety to it so you actually could do this once a week for a year. But what if you changed up the traditional burger and I took the nutrition info for a quarter pounder with cheese, medium fry. Okay, I took that. Wow, in all its 850 calorie glory, in its 15 grams of saturated fat glory, only seven grams of fiber, and look at all that sodium. What if you traded it up? And you said, okay, Zani, I'll take your challenge. I'll do something like this baked salmon patty with 100% whole wheat sandwich buns, and I'm gonna go with a three bean salad, and yada, yada, whoa, sodium's better. Whoa, look at that saturated fat savings from 15 grams down to three grams. That's what really matters. Total fat, but saturated fat specifically, that's what really matters. Saturated fat lets your liver make cholesterol. We don't want your liver to make cholesterol. Saturated fat is the big deal. So if you made this change and you had salmon burgers were your new go-to burger once a week for a year, that saves 12 grams of saturated fat from going through your body each week. 12 grams of saturated fat, that's three teaspoons. Three teaspoons of saturated fat each week. But if you times it times 52 weeks in a year, that's 624 grams of saturated fat. 
Now I happen to know in a cup, there's 224 grams in a cup. Okay, I know that, I divided it. It adds up, that three teaspoons of saturated fat savings adds up to three cups of, and this is two cups with a cup on top. Look at that. This is how much saturated fat, not total fat, saturated fat, artery clogging saturated fat, not going through your body in a year's time. Three teaspoons less every week adds up. That's how it works, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it works. That what you choose makes a difference. It really does. Now, I know what a lot of you are saying. Zanya, I can make those salmon burgers, but I'm not going to be able to eat one every week. Okay. It can be different every week. Let me show you. Now, I gave you the recipe for the salmon burgers. You all get that. But if you're in the course, you have access to my recipe vault at eatrealamerica.com where we have over 1,000 recipes, of which over 200, 300 are fish recipes. We have a tropical salmon sandwich. Oh, it's so fabulous. And that's using fresh you know, salmon that you cook on the grill. Or this cod Reuben sandwich. You know, boy, um, St. Patty's Day. You know, sauerkraut's amazing. Why have corned beef? Trade that up. Cod, all the types of fish are great. Or you can use salmon for it. And then salmon sheet pan fajitas. Why use chicken? Why use beef? Let's try us some salmon for that, shall we? Oh my goodness, there's so many great things. And then this honey shiraka oven baked salmon. Gonna tell ya, uh, we got you covered. I hope you'll say yes to my challenges that I'm giving you. I hope you'll try these recipes. But for now, are you ready for food number three? Are you ready? I need a drum roll, please. A drum roll, please. <laughs> Wow, it's been beans, it's been salmon. What could the third food be? An apple? The third food is an apple? Oh, come on, Zanya, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> an apple a day keeps the cardiologist away. And it is so true. Did you know, check this out, this study in 2013, we've known this since 2013, this British Medical Journal study concluded that the 150-year-old proverb of an apple a day is able to match modern medicine statin drugs in effectiveness while likely having fewer side effects. An apple a day. It really is true. It really is true. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? And that's not all. Did you also know that this review of studies published in the Journal of Advances in Nutrition concluded that apples could help reduce the risk of not only heart disease, dun, 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 our number one leading killer, but cancer, our number two leading killer, and also asthma, Alzheimer's, and diabetes, while improving our bone health and weight control? <laughs> An apple a day. An apple a day, something so simple. Apples are available all the time. They're delicious. They're, wait a minute, we gotta make them delicious. How can we make a same old boring apple a day not be boring? How can we make it delicious? Well, first of all, before we make it delicious, tell me how do apples really do that? How they do it with the secret to their superpowers is they contain pectin, a soluble fiber that blocks cholesterol absorption in your gut. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, also, they have polyphenols and other antioxidants that fight heart disease by lowering blood pressure and cholesterol. That's really important. And I want you to eat the skin, always eat the skin. It's loaded with fiber and other beneficial nutrients. In fact, I want you to know that that tree right there, when you're looking at those apples on the tree, that is protecting itself from the environment, right? It's protecting itself. And the apple is saying, I have all my nutrients to fight insects on the outside level. So you want to eat that part. The, it's very good, but you want to wash it really well and or even better by organic when you can. Because apples are on the dirty dozen list, according to the Environmental Working Group, um, the dirty dozen meaning highly pesticide. So 
wash it really well or buy organic. I do try to buy organic whenever I can. I go into the store, I see all the apples and I go, oh, well, let me see what they have for organic. And they have only two or three choices in the organic section. And I'm like, they look really good. And I love Gala or I love Fuji or I love Brayburn or whatever it is that they have. And I'll, I'll get organic. So I buy organic apples when I can. I just wanted to share that. Now, how do we make it taste delicious? Two things. You got to know what your fave is. Know what you, do you know? what your favorite apple is. I used to think a red delicious apple had to be the, the most delicious apple. And that's what I always used to buy. And they always went bad before I ate them because I didn't like them. They're really not very good. I don't know who titled them red delicious. I don't know. I think some marketing person, but they're really not. They're not that good. You want a sweet apple, get a Fuji or a Gala or the Ambrosia or the Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp. I'm going to tell you, these are, that's my favorite apples right there. Right there, my favorite apples. Also, that Brayburn that's sort of toward the tart, I really like it. I'll tell you, I had on my son over with his friend, other friend, Tyrek, and I said, hey, boys, um, you want, um, you, you know, do you want an apple? And, they, and, and Tyrek goes, yeah. He goes, do you have a Granny Smith? It's my favorite. And I was like, you like a green apple? I go, you like those? He goes, yeah, it's so tart. I just love them. I never bought those, but I started buying those. And so every time Tyrant came over, I go, hey, I got some Granny Smith apples for you. And it's funny, everybody's different. Don't think that everybody likes what you like. And find out in your family what they like. You'll see apple consumption go up. You know what else? Also, if you, some people just don't want to bite into an apple. They just don't want to, but you slice it and they go like hotcakes. You ever notice that? So get yourself this slicer to make it easy for yourself or just use a knife, whatever it takes for you to quickly slice up an apple and present them to the family. It will go down. You need that little peanut butter for them to dip it in. Oh, now we're talking a really good snack. An apple a day shouldn't be hard to do. And if you trade out a pear in there, pears are good too. So for variety, you could do an apple or a pear, but I will tell you, an apple a day or a pear a day, make it happen, okay? Alrighty, the next thing is I want to share a recipe with you because that's kind of what I do, right? And uh, I want to share this dreamy fruit and nutty salad with you that I make on a super regular basis and I make a double batch and then we have it that night for dinner, our dessert. I don't call it dreamy fruit and nutty salad though, I call it dreamy fruit and nutty dessert and it's our dessert and then we have it leftovers for breakfast the next day so it's real easy to get apples in. And so you get this recipe too and whether, however you chop up your apples, get them chopped up. And this is, if your apples are starting to get soft and mushy, like, ooh, who wants to eat these? Then they'll work great for this recipe too. So um, just think about that. You can easily t turn them into the salad and you can get them. Now, this recipe calls for strawberries and blueberries, which guess what? Lower cholesterol too. <laughs> they have that same pectin and all that great stuff too. Remember, I only had three foods to pick for you, um, but you're really learning about 10. Um, and there's that Greek yogurt again. I'm using that Greek yogurt again. And then this has two teaspoons of honey. That's why I made that a little heaping teaspoon just to make it easy. And um, that will make this addictive and you want this to be addictive, right? And then raisins are also another superfood, and chia seeds are another food that lower cholesterol. And you know what else goes in this? Nuts. Did you know that adding nuts daily to your diet reduces your risk of heart disease by 29%? <laughs> yeah, I could have picked nuts as one of our top three foods. It's in the top 10. So there you go. This salad has it all, or this dessert, or this breakfast. And you know what it satisfies your sweet cravings you think you had pie or something it's fantastic and the chia seeds in there are amazing and you can make it with all apples trust me if you don't have strawberries and blueberries it's okay don't not make this recipe because you don't have them just use two apples chop them up and put them in there okay um pineapple are really nice in there i'll often add pineapple to it but just I just want you to know that recipe. It's like, um, it's just a base starter recipe and you can mix that up. But like I said, just slice apples, serve them with peanut butter, turn them into a recipe. Um, there's many more ways to enjoy them. So ladies and gentlemen, we've covered our three foods, how we do it on time. We're getting close to Q and A time. Let me just share a couple more things. Um, before I leave this, I wanna share with you about a really important, uh, as much as me teaching you these three foods is important, I want to share with you that our culture 
is constantly trying to make you unhealthy. We live in a world that we have the healthiest foods available and we have the unhealthiest foods available. And I want to empower you to be like this. In your kitchen, your cupboards, what you buy and what you store, your kitchen should be a health haven. It should be easy for you. And I want you, when you go out in the world to a restaurant, because we have foofy sweet drinks available at every corner, we have desserts and just so much sugary and fried foods available to us. For example, when uh, my son was about 12 and his three nephews came, his cousins came over, my three nephews came over and Trista, their mom and I were together, we were taking the boys to the apple orchard. It was October and it's super fun activity to do in Michigan. And off we were going to the apple orchard and I, and I pulled Trista aside. I said, Trista, you know, when we get there, they're going to have those donuts there, right? And she was like, yeah. And I said, and, and I said, I'd rather not have the donuts. I'd rather not go down that path. I go, here's what I'm thinking. I said, and I'm like, you know, and she knew this. My son had had a, had a heart defect. He was born with a heart defect, a arterial coarctation, where they had to surgically go in and repair the heart and fix this coarctation. And the doctor said, he's going to be fine, but he is at risk for heart disease. It's rough where we surgically repaired that. And it, if he has high cholesterol, it will clog up. He needs to have a healthy diet. He, that plaque, it'll adhere there at that rough spot. So he needs to be on a very heart healthy diet. I looked at him and said, he got the right mama. <laughs> I got that boy covered. And Here's the thing. I said, we're going to go there and we're going to smell those donuts and the boys are going to want those donuts. And I know that they not only use white flour and sugar and then they submerge it in this fat and it <laughs> soaks up this fat. But that fat is not olive oil. It's not walnuts. It's not avocados. It's not good for you oil. It is like the worst. They use the cheapest. They call it industrial oil to stand the rigors of frying. They don't want to change it for like two weeks. They use the same oil over and over. It's really pro-inflammatory, uh, very bad for you. I was like, I don't want to get sucked into that. I want to go. We're going to go on the corn maze. We're going to ride the hay ride. And we're going to go in and we're going to see all these apples. We're going to be able to pick all these apples. And we can do our apple palooza game that we do. The apple apple. Apple Palooza. And it was like, okay, um, yeah, let's do that. And I said, um, do you think that boys will mind that we don't get a donut? She goes, yeah, let's, let's pull it off. So I announced to the boys, hey, you guys, I know we're going to smell these donuts, but we're not going to get them because they use crappy, awful oil that they fry the donuts in. They'll smell good, but let me tell you, they're not good for our bodies. But we're going to go, we're going to do the hayride, and we're going to do the um, you know, the corn maze, and then we're going to go in and we're going to all pick out apples, and we're going to come home and do an Apple Palooza party. Sound good? And the boys were like, yeah, no problem, sounds good. And we got in the car and we go and we go in and we did the hayride and we did the, we did the corn maze. It was so much fun. And then we picked out the apples and, and the boys, you could tell they smelled the donuts, but you just, they turned right back and we got all done and we're driving home. And I go, boys, did, did you miss not getting a donut? And they're like, no, we could smell that awful greasy smell. And they use that really unhealthy oil. We could smell it. You see, anybody else smells that and goes, oh, donuts, that smells good. Where other people smell that and go, that smells nasty. As much of anything that I'm sharing with you is I'm sharing with you how to live in this world because there is temptation hitting you all. And we can still live in the United States where we have plethora of good food and plethora of tempting bad foods. We can learn to navigate that scene. And uh, that's my job is to help empower you to navigate that scene in so many ways. So I hope that story helped you because it helps me because we love to go to the apple orchard every fall uh, at least once, if not more. And we got home and we tried all the apples and we sliced them up and it was, so we voted what our favorites were and it was so much fun and so learning. So I hope you try that too. Alrighty, so back to the slides, just to finish up, the dreamy fruit and nutty salad, please say yes. Will you say yes? Everybody all together, yes. Uh, try the dreamy fruit and nutty salad or just commit to eating apples more often. 
So in the summer, I've taught you my three foods, as promised. Top three foods featured beans, salmon. That's all fish and seafood, but I really targeted on salmon. I really targeted on the envelope of salmon. And uh, learning and apples. And then in learning the variety, where the power is, is not just knowing these three foods. The power is knowing these three foods and having full variety and full buy-in from the family and fresh ideas as ideas wear out. It's kind of a constant thing. And so I really want to encourage you in that way. That's what's key. And then lowering information is important too. And I look forward to diving into all the principles about information a lot more in the course for those of you that are interested in learning more about that because it's key, as key, and as important. Never stop learning. Never stop learning. Um, I think that this fight against obesity, getting our weight down, getting our cholesterol where we want it to be, um, it's a big fight and it takes a lot. So let's go back to our slides and I just wanna share with you that I'm inviting you to join me. And we're, there's, this is the tip of the iceberg. I've tried to pack in as much as I could pack in here, but I'm gonna tell you, we are gonna dive in so that I promise you, we're even gonna talk about supplements that you should consider and how much we're gonna talk about all these supplements from red yeast rice extract and CoQ10 and niacin and uh, vitamin B12 all these nutrients that we could be taking, and you can talk to your doctor about them and say, I'd like to take these. And they'll say, yeah, it's a good idea, let's do it. And you do it, um, I will tell you, there's so much you can do to help reduce your cholesterol, but also improve your, and reduce your risk for Alzheimer's disease. There's much, so we'll be talking about supplements. Uh, we'll be talking about more of the foods because there's so many that lower cholesterol and tasty ways to do it. So you not only learn a lot every single night, and you go home with three recipes of homework to make, but you learn how to win in this culture that's tough. I just wanna say thank you from my kitchen, from my heart to yours. Thank you for joining me today. All my best to you. Keep it simple and eat real. Enjoy everybody.